Good morning and welcome to the Real Estate Walk and Talk. Apparently it's not always sunny here in Jacksonville. Came out to the beach, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it started raining. And so I found a little pier here. I was not gonna be denied. I told you guys I was going live at 10.06 and, uh, and we're going live. So uh, today's question is, what are the pros and cons of investing in Jacksonville versus investing in Cleveland? And if you have questions like this, I answer them live every Tuesday and Thursday on our show, the Not Your Average Investor Show. We do it every Tuesday and Thursday at 12.30 Eastern. I'm inviting you to join us. It's a lot of fun. You can register at jwbshow.com. So the question is, investing in Cleveland versus investing in Jacksonville, what are the pros and cons? Well, we'll start with Jacksonville first. All right, Jacksonville is a market that has population growth whereas Cleveland is a market that has population declining. That's number one. Population growth in Jacksonville over the last two decades is over 40%. That's 4-0, 40%. Cleveland's population is declining. So that's advantage number one for Jacksonville. That leads to the second advantage for Jacksonville, which is higher historical average appreciation rates by a lot. All right, in Jacksonville, the historical home price appreciation rate, and this is taken straight from the Federal Housing Finance Agency, is 4.3% on average per year since 1991. In Cleveland, it's about half of that. It's actually 2.3% in Cleveland since 1991 on average each year. And when you're investing in assets that cost potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars, that makes a big difference. So another uh, advantage for investing in Jacksonville, higher historical home price appreciation, almost doubling what you see in Cleveland. And the third advantage for Jacksonville is that you do get positive cash flow. We have home prices here that are 9% below and rents that are 1% above the national medians. So you still get positive cash flow in Jacksonville, which is the most important thing when you're choosing to invest in a rental property. It's the difference between an asset and a liability. An asset is something that pays you every single month, which is positive cash flow. A liability is something that costs you money every single month. And uh, you do not have liabilities by investing in Jacksonville. All right, so now let's move over to Cleveland. All right, what are the advantages of investing in Cleveland? Well, there are some. Cleveland's market costs, the, the price of homes in Cleveland is lower. So you have a lower home price, you have a lower barrier of entry in Cleveland. That's a pro. We always like lower barriers of entry. The second pro for Cleveland is that uh, you get a slightly higher rent to price ratio, which means that you're going to get slightly more positive cash flow for the dollars that you invest there. And uh, so that means that your dollars that you invest there, you're gonna get slightly more positive cash flow. That's a good thing, right? So there are your pros for investing in Cleveland. So which is better? Who wins in the end? Well, this depends on your horizon. See, if you are buying and holding for a very short timeline, call it one year, two years or so, and you have ideas to, to sell this quickly, well, Cleveland might be the better option for you. You know, of course, you need to find a great management team. It all comes down to that. But let's assume that the management teams are the same in Cleveland and Jacksonville. If you're investing for a very short horizon, that slightly higher positive cash flow probably will pay off for you. Right? And the reality is that you can't count on home price appreciation unless you're in a market for the long haul. Because if you just buy an asset today and you're thinking about selling it next year, you're gonna get eaten up in the transactional costs that come along with it. You just, you just don't know what home price appreciation is going to do from year over year. So you can't count on it in the short run. So if you're an investor and you're thinking about buying and holding for like a year or two years, you might really wanna go and take a look at Cleveland. But if you're an investor who is planning on buying and holding for the long haul, right? This is this asset portfolio you're building up, this positive cash flow and growth is what you want and you're in for a full market cycle. That's when you can count on home price appreciation. You need to be holding for a period of 10 to 20 years or more and that's when you can count on home price appreciation because home price appreciation tends to repeat itself. And welcome everybody who's walking with me here this morning. We're talking about the pros of investing in Jacksonville versus investing in Cleveland. So if you're investing for a full market cycle, this is when Jacksonville really starts to shine. Check this out. If you 
bought one property for $100,000 in 1991 in Cleveland, that one property would be worth around $188,000 or so in 2020. All right. If you bought that same property for $100,000 in Jacksonville in 1991, that would be worth well over $320,000 here in 2020. That's over $130,000 of additional growth just by investing in a market that has historically higher home price appreciation in Jacksonville. So there you have it. If you're buying for the long haul, Jacksonville wins. If you're going for the short run, one, two, three years, maybe something like that in a quick flip, you probably wanna go and check out a different market like Cleveland. You'll be able to get more assets. You'll be able to get slightly more positive cash flow, and it's not really a buy and hold strategy though. So I hope you guys appreciated this. The weather is starting to clear up a little bit. Oh, maybe, maybe not. We're getting a little sun shower here. So I hope to see all of you on the Not Your Average Investor Show. Uh, we're doing it tomorrow. Tuesday, 1230 Eastern. You can register at JWB Show. Take care, everybody.